All right, guys, I'm to a stopping point. At least I'm uh, giving myself an excuse to be at a stopping point because I am worn out. This has been uh, a long day, but I got a lot done. Charlie's been hanging out with me, huh, buddy? Charlie, say hello. All right, so Charlie's been hanging out. Uh, since the day's over, I've made myself a drink. If this was Jack Daniels in here, you'd call it a Lynchburg lemonade, but this is Kentucky bourbon in there with that lemonade, so I guess you'd call it a Lexington lemonade. I don't know, but it's pretty good. Not a bad way to end a day. That's Angel's Envy. That's pretty good bourbon. Probably too good to make a Lynchburg lemonade with, but you know what? I think it tastes that gun good, and I don't really care. Anyway, so uh, I realized I was at a point that if I continued doing what I was doing, I was going to make myself miserable, and I need to go ahead and get these pieces and that cap rail stained. Because once I get all this on there, staining it, it's going to be a problem, and right now it's easy. So these two 10-foot uh, 4x4s, are going to be the primary support joists that the three of those sit on. And this is a classic case of overbuilding. I mean, this is really an overbuild uh, component to the system here. Four by fours are really not necessary for this, but you know, I have never regretted overbuilding something. I have regretted underbuilding something. So, you know, it wasn't that much of an add on cost to the system for just two of them. If it was something like I need 20 of them, it'd be a different story, you know? Uh, so I went ahead and went with those. And they're going to go across that back. And they're going to support these three 50 gallon tubs and i'll figure out how to box that in and how to manage the piping and everything like that once i get them up there and uh kind of start fiddling around with it i'll figure out exactly what i want to do and do i want to bring any additional support joists in not that those four by fours can't handle those three tanks but more the bottom of the tanks themselves the space but you know the the, the span any type of additional joisting i want to do and things like that and we'll figure that out from there I don't think we'll really need much. Uh, got the uh, top rail on, got it stained. It's still wet, it's starting to rain of course, but I don't think we're gonna get enough rain to mess it up or anything. And it was, uh, it was either get it done today or, or lose another day of work tomorrow. And I wasn't about to have that happen. Uh, this whole project's taking longer than I expect. I did get the two uh, bulkheads in. Uh, I got a, probably easier to see on this side, got a one and a quarter on the top, two inch on the bottom. Did the expanding foam for my service access and i'm actually thinking about adding a third bulkhead there way up at the top and that one will be for overflow so right up to just at the very top maybe pop in a three quarter or even one inch and then just when these two pipes come out and they go and they'll tee off right here uh, when we go this way go ahead and uh, just follow them with that extra line and go past that delivery and past that tee off and go into that swale there. Of course, that means that when we have a major rain event and this tank overflows, it'll overflow through that pipe into that swale and then go into that whole system of five swales over there uh, and spread that nutrient across the land. Um, it's not really necessary, it's just easy to do and there's really no good reason not to do it. Uh, you know, it's about $5 a pipe, $3 of fittings and uh, digging 80% of the trench anyway. And I'm not gonna dig it, I'm gonna make my farmhand uh, dig it. The other thing I'm going to make him do is when I'm done with all this, I'll go ahead and stain all of those logs down there. When he comes tomorrow, he don't know it yet, but he's going to get back there in that little tight space, and he's going to go ahead and stain that for me down there. That's, that looks like a pain in the butt, and that's what young labor is for. I uh, got the uh, topsoil completed and uh, ended up being about one and a quarter yards, I'd guess, of topsoil. I left a pretty good bit of headspace there. Yeah, I'm probably getting some really pretty river rock or something like that uh, to cover that in. I don't see us growing a lot in there. Probably nothing. Uh, maybe some zero scape type stuff, some cactus or something like that. You know, something that really doesn't cause uh, need much moisture. If we're not watering that, uh, in our climate, these landscape timbers, like I said, they'll last 10, 15 years or more. Uh, we have really dry, arid, alkaline climate, and as acid and uh, moisture are the enemies of these landscape timbers, and I don't have much of either usually. Especially if we make that drain system work, we'll never be holding large amounts of moisture, and then this topsoil is very well-drained stuff, by the way. So that's about it. That's where we're at now. Me and Charlie are ready to go sit on the porch and enjoy uh, the end of the day, and we'll catch up with you again, and I think it'll be the next one if you're if you're struggling with any of the uh the system details here it'll start to make sense as we start to get some stuff in and actually get some things cycling and then it'll probably be you know three or four uh videos from now and we'll start to get these systems here constructed and hooked up and then it'll all really start to click for you 
then you realize it's actually a really simple design. It's actually kind of elegant, but uh, simple and elegant go hand in hand. That's what you're really looking for. When you can design something simple uh, but good looking, you usually end up with an elegant design as long as it's functional as well. And I think this is going to tick all the boxes. I'm kind of taking everything I've learned from all the other systems I've built and applying them here. You know, there's going to be a featured system. You can see our, our porch is right there, our outdoor kitchen and all. So when people come over, this is as zone one as it gets, really. This is going to be, you know, this is how they'll see it. Uh, might eventually even have a pergola up here. I'm going to have at least, you know, two of those wicking beds. I might do all my wicking beds for the rest of my systems up here with those. That would be a total of 10. You know, I could even end up doing another water feature that looks just like this somewhere else as long as it's higher. Really not sure yet, but we do know we're going to build this a very solid base to the system. Anyway, with that, we'll uh, catch up with you with uh, part four next time.